Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at uh, Stanford working with the OpenSim group, and I've been developing accurate and efficient muscle models. Uh, the OpenSim group writes a piece of software called OpenSim, which is used to make musculoskeletal simulations of people. These are really useful for predicting um, the kinds of muscle forces or joint reaction forces that might be happening in a person as they run and walk. As you can see in this video, of Sam Hamner's running simulation. Now the muscle models are really important to these simulations um, and so we've modeled the way a muscle develops force very similarly to how it, it happens in real life. Muscle is made of two parts. There's a tendon which is elastic. You could feel this in the back of your leg. It's your Achilles tendon is one of the longest ones in your body. And then there's the meat part, which is a collection of fibers, and they contract when they're electrically excited by your nervous system. And we've recently developed a muscular model, muscular tendon model, that is both more accurate and faster than our previous models. And we've validated its accuracy against um, experimental uh, results and also done a computational benchmark to show that it's faster. If you look to the top of the figure, you can see a little bit of how we model muscle. Tendon is shown as a spring, and the collection of fibers, the meat part, is that square structure. And it shows another spring, because the muscle fibers are elastic, but it also shows a, a box, because the muscle fibers um, can generate an active contractile force, and this force changes with length and velocity. And our big improvement to make this muscle model more accurate has been to um, develop a nice curve fitting facility to fit the curves of our muscle model uh, directly from the experimental data, as you can see. We've uh, also shown that our models are accurate by experimentally validating them. How do we do that? Well, we do a simulation where we take the muscle and we stretch it through a prescribed motion and we also turn it on, we activate it. And this can be done so that it identically replicates um, the same experiments that were done on real muscle. So for example, in the plot, you can see uh, six plots. And in gray, you see a bunch of squiggly lines. These are the force profiles that were traced out by a rat soleus muscle that was maximally excited. So it's turned on as much as it can be. And then it's stretched. And Krylo and Sander Clark that recorded the forces that this muscle developed. We did exactly the same experiment with our computational model and you can see in black that the black curve is very close to the gray curve. So we know that our muscle model is quite accurate. We've also gone to great efforts to make the muscles faster, or sorry, simulate faster because the main computational burden in a musculoskeletal simulation is actually simulating the muscles because we have so many of them. Um, and to that end, we've developed a conventional formulation that's used to, to model muscle, and we've also developed a new uh, muscle model that we thought would simulate faster, and indeed it does. Um, for example, it will depend on your simulation that you're doing, but in our benchmark simulations, when you're using an explicit integrator, at low activation, so when the muscle is turned off, our new muscle simulates about 10 times faster than a conventional model. The same is true with an implicit integrator, though the difference is not as great. In conclusion, I've shown you that our new muscle model is both accurate uh, because of our nice curve fitting facility, and it's also fast because of our new formulation. And uh, for more information, you can see our paper online.